Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So I am back with the podcast. So I just want to thank you guys for all your support. I'm glad you guys are filling these podcasts in between making, you know, videos on camera and stuff like that. So anyways, I want to come on here and do another breakdown. Y'all know I love some breakdowns, bitch, okay? Mm -hmm. So I want to do a breakdown about the whole JD Funkmaster Flex, Brian Cox, Dame Dash, and Jay-Z situation, honey. So make sure y'all have y'all's teacups because y'all already know this breakdown's about to be what? Piping hot. So what's going down is this. So everything with this whole Jay-Z, Colin Kaepernick, NFL situation is just getting messier and messier. So if you guys do not know... Um, I last reported about how Brian Michael Cox, who's a singer-songwriter, he was on his podcast basically talking about the whole situation, saying that Jay-Z called Jermaine and told Jermaine not to take the same deal that he has now taken for himself. So, of course, that went viral. Everybody was talking about it. So, Funkmaster Flex, a.k.a. the DJ King of New York himself. He lied! Y'all niggas worship him! He decided to speak onto the situation, and this is what Funkmaster Flex had to say. He says, I just got off the phone with Jermaine Dupri. He confirmed that when he was working with the NFL last year, he did get a call from Jay-Z asking him, how deep are you in with the NFL? Expressing that might not be a good idea. Then he goes on to say this. This subject matter has been weighing on me for a second. I spoken to Jermaine, Fat Joe, Nessa, P.O., T.T., and my opinion is probably not what people I have relationships want to hear, but it's bothering me, so I need to discuss. Colin has taken an incredibly unselfish stand for bringing light to a social injustice that will never be duplicated. And even though his settlement was under $10 million for him and Eric, which covered mostly lawyers' fees, I'm not 1,000% okay that Colin accepted the deal because it feels like since the deal, Colin hasn't been as aggressive as he once was. I know I've been 1,000% better with Rock Nation as of late, so I hope I can be honest so I hope I can be honest and continue our positive relationship. We are never past kneeling. The fear of the kneeling is what pushed the NFL to get more aggressive with unlawful tactics. Hence why they settled with Colin. To dismiss his efforts in front of the NFL commissioner, the one who spearheaded the Colin corruption, was an extreme slap in the face. Jay-Z in our world is our Michael Jordan, decided by people who respect and cherish his accomplishments. Watching that commissioner's body language and feeling his desperation to open the season with the strongest African-American possible with credibility was obvious. If Jay-Z saw what he saw in the press conference and feels working with and feels working from the inside while being paid and receiving a stake in a team is the answer and can spearhead social justice from the inside, he is our hero for life. But if he and the air personalities slash social media influencers that Rock Nation manages or wants to be managed by them has spun, has spun the Believe in Jay, give him a chance campaign to line his pockets, this will be remembered and not swept under the rug in a few months. Trust, time will tell, hashtag my opinion. So that is what Funkmaster Flex said. So, of course, that went viral. And then soon, Jermaine Dupri and Brian Cox, they had to come out and basically talk about everything because they were catching a lot of heat and people wanted to talk to them and basically get, you know, information from the horse's mouth. So they went on to Big Tiger's show at V103. Honey. When I tell you this was a 25-minute interview of nothing but mess, honey. It was a lot of damn pussy popping and backpedaling, okay? I'm sitting here like, really? Really? Like, I was just really disappointed. First of all, Brian Michael Cox, when he comes out to talk about the situation, the first words is, oh, I was inebriated, I was drunk. I already knew right there it was going to be a whole bunch of bullshit, okay? When you start an interview with saying, I know what I said, but I was drunk, I'm like, damn, bro, really? So the whole situation is insane. So he comes on, he claims he's inebriated, he talks about it. You can just tell from his body language he's nervous. He's just a ball of nervous energy, you know, I feel like definitely Jay-Z and the powers that be definitely tapped him and Jermaine Dupree on the shoulder and was like, y'all better clean this shit up. 
Because whatever was said behind the scenes, it was not supposed to be spun out there to the public. Y'all better clean this shit up. Delete all that shit! Delete all that shit! Best play with you, Peggy! And... You know, from what I saw from the interview, it left me with more questions than answers. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys a snippet of what Brian had to say during the interview. And then a few snippets of what Jermaine Dupree had to say. Check this out and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Good afternoon, sir. <laughs> what up? Says that. What did you say, Brian? Um, well, to be perfectly honest, I was a little inebriated also at the time. But uh, I said something to the effect where, you know, um... JD, you know, caught a lot of flack for being a part of the NFL situation last year. And I said that something like Jay-Z made a phone call to Jermaine and told him not to do it. Mm. Um, that, it, it, you know, basically in a nutshell, that's what was said. Okay. And then, so that clearly went viral. If you type your name in right now, it's the first nine things that yeah. pop up. That was interesting. That was like a two minute clip. Right. And I actually, it, it was in context to me saying that I hope that this that this that there's you know some good it's going to happen you know right. I, I believe i'm optimistic about about jay-z he's a brilliant person and right he's done a lot of great things already so for me um it wasn't like a diss or nothing like that it was just based on a conversation you know jermaine's my man you know what i mean right. a, a side of us making records together like him putting me on and the whole nine i've been knowing him for 22 years you know what i mean so i saw the flack that he caught last year i saw all i mean just for putting on the shows in the Centennial Park. Right. You know what I mean? Just being associated with the brand. I saw everybody, you know, even people this city. A lot city, of shade. A lot of people in this city threw shade on him. You know what I mean? And and and, and didn't, and, and you know, was really not rocking with it. You know what I mean? Right. And said a lot of things about him. You know what I mean? I saw him take all that, take you know, take it, take it to the head. You know what I mean? So when I um, saw this news break, I just, you know, we, myself, Isaac Hayes III, we were having a conversation mm -hmm. on a, you know, my podcast, and that's what, you know, it came out. I only spoke on it for two or three minutes, and right. all of a sudden, this is Wednesday, Thursday, and then Saturday, it's a thing. it becomes a thing. It's a thing. I learned a valuable lesson about media, the power of media, the power of social media this past week. You know what I mean? It's also the power of your voice. Yeah, that. That, that too, you know what I mean? Um, because my name was everywhere. They didn't even mention the podcast. They didn't mention anybody else who was on. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, they didn't even mention the other, like dog. Like, all I, you know heard, I thought you was doing an interview. Nah, all I no, I do. I do a podcast every Wednesday, right. and we talk about a variety of you know uh, uh, topics. That was one of like maybe six topics last week. You know what I mean? I spent maybe three minutes on it right. in that one little clip. And people don't even talk about what I said at the end of that clip. You know what I mean? At the end of it, I say, yo, I'm, I'm not condemning it. I right. think that, you know, if Jay is involved, it's I'm optimistic that this is something that could be positive. You yeah, know what I mean? I didn't hear about none of that. Yeah, like if you open up that, you know, the complex... Whatever I saw some early on complex.com, right. they actually put it in the article, but it's like in the article. Way in you know, the, the, the headline you know, is don't like, read. exactly. And I learned that too this week that people don't read. You know what I mean? And, so, so. All right. So you guys just saw what Brian Michael Cox had to say. Now, the one thing I don't like is I'm going to show you a snippet. If you guys watch my video on Lovely TTV, I didn't play with the audio. I didn't, you know, put in a clip or manipulator, make it seem some type of way. I played his exact words. So what he's saying is that, oh, a lot of people, they, they didn't play the part where I said, you know, I'm going to wait. I'm not going to condemn Jay-Z. Guess what? Lovely TTV did because that's called integrity. So I let Brian Michael Cox's words speak for themselves. And when you see the difference between him on his podcast versus him on V105, you will see he's a ball of nervous energy. On his podcast, I do not get the um, vibe or anything that he's drunk. And even if he was drunk, like the old saying goes, a drunk tongue speaks a sober mind. Most people tell the truth when they're drunk, when they're inebriated. So I'm not buying this. I see a lot of pussy popping and backpedaling, most likely because Jay-Z and them got on that ass. You know, and that's the sad part. We see this all the time in the entertainment industry when people are speaking their truth especially from behind the scenes. All of a sudden, the celebrities involved try to shut them down and shut them up. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch a snippet from my video from last week because, like I said, nothing was manipulated. I played everything, even the parts where he was giving Jay-Z props and he wasn't trying to condemn Jay-Z. At the end of the day, I'm not buying what he's saying on V103. Check this out. I, I, I called the person who invited me to the NFL thing last year. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and it was like, well, same shit. I said, well, send me the information. It, it, it's literally the same exact shit. The only difference is 
what Jay Z's doing is he's doing the actual Super Bowl halftime. Well, he's yeah, he's gonna help produce and the so, Super Bowl he, show he's and do the other shit too. He's gonna counsel them yeah. in social justice yeah. in a campaign. It's yeah. called uh, I think it's uh, I want to make sure it's called what they call it. Um, Inspire Change. What is it yeah. called? I think yeah, he's gonna consult. Consult on entertainment, including the Super Bowl halftime show, and contribute to the league's activism campaign, Inspire Change. Yeah, so here's the deal. Like I said, I mean, I am I have to see what how it, you know, how, how it unravels. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to condemn it or be like, you know what I mean? Oh, that shit's whack. I mean, I'm not going to do that. You know, there are people who are vocal about it and going crazy about it. But for me, I want to look at it intelligently and because I know a lot of what was happening before mm-hmm. and how, 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 we were to how we were engaged last year as a as a community. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like I, you know, if you knew that, why would you pick up the phone and call? You know what I'm saying? You, you, you knew that me. about a year ago. You think you knew? No, I'm, I'm talking about you know. I I I I, I don't even sound like I'm, def- I'm defending JD, but I'm just saying like at the end of the day, I didn't have an took, issue with none of that shit. He took a a, a beating, a beating, right? For the, doing the same shit, right? He took a beating, and I guarantee you, they not, they they didn't pay him as much as they about to pay dude. Piggyback on them too, the same thing. Like when it when it went viral on Saturday, mm. and I saw people sending me, I, I I didn't. If anybody ever followed me on social media, I've not said one thing else about it. You right. know, I've gotten the calls too, TMZ, uh, everybody, Van Lathans, everybody done called me too, and I've been like not responding because. I want you know. I felt like it was gonna go away too, but you know. But yeah, so so everybody, you know, I didn't even call Cox. I just, yeah. I, I mean, B Cox, by the way, because right. I don't want people at this. <laughs> like, pause. Yeah, right. pause. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't call B Cox right. because, um, like I said, I felt like each person in the world has their own opinion and how they feel and what they do things right. Right. Um, as he mentioned, yeah, people in my own city, the city of Atlanta, and the people that's listening. Um, people was dogging me out, tearing my name apart yeah. for throwing concerts in Centennial Park. Leading not, up to the Super Bowl. Not the Super Bowl. Right. Not halftime, right. not anything. People were around here going eight on me, right? Right. So he and I had a conversation about that, and the conversation that we had was just, I, I was like, well, I, I just want to see where this is going because— yeah. You know, I had um, I had people on radio stations that I never even knew was doing radio shows just going crazy <laughs> on me. Like, she told me that I was taking blood money. Mm. She said, Jermaine, you're taking blood money. And it hit really, really hard. Like, it was really like, like a damn moment. Like, wow, right? Mm. So in that moment, I was catching so much flack from just being – trying to do something for Atlanta. Right. Um, that I started to back out. Right. I started as they asked me to do things more and more that said NFL, <laughs> I would start saying, I'm in the studio. I'm cool. I'm a, you know So what I mean? long story short, Hove called me when he saw this clip, right? And he called me and we talked about the clip. Mm-hmm. Um the reason I came up here today is to just make sure that I let everybody know he never told me don't do what I was doing. Okay. Right? And I think that that's the part that I see Flex said confirmation. <laughs> everybody, like, you know, when I tell people that he and I spoke, right. they run with that. Mm. That's not a secret. Everybody mm. knows Jay-Z's my man, right? right? <laughs> me and Jay-Z is like this. Right. So, um, we speak, you know, and it's not, I, I didn't think that my friends and myself, me speaking to my friends is like a secret, right? So, um, you like you asked me when I walked in here, did I speak to Flex? Yes, I spoke to Flex. Right. And I told Flex, I spoke to Hove. Right. Me and Hove spoke. From there, you know, <laughs> I don't evolved. have no control, I, you know. Capital letters on Twitter. I, I'm yeah. like, yeah. wow. You know, I don't, you know, but I mean, you know, like I said, I wanted to make sure that, because I see a, lot, a bunch of people on all these things saying, JD, how could you let that man talk you out of a deal? Right? Mm. It was never nothing like that. All right, so you guys just heard what Jermaine Dupree had to say about the situation and him talking about when Jay Z called him. So, of course, Funkmaster Flex had something to say as well. 
So after that video went viral, Funkmaster Flex took to Instagram and he said this. He says, ha, 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 I love you, Jermaine, for life. NFL slash Rock Nation applying that pressure for you to backpedal. Body language is everything. It's Wednesday, bruh. What happened Monday? I finally understand what Cap slash Nessa been experiencing. So that is what Funkmaster Flex had to say about the situation. This situation is insane. But yes, I'm definitely feeling the whole backpedaling, pussy popping, backtracking vibes throughout this whole interview. Now, you know, a lot of things kind of concern me with what JD was saying. In one breath, he's saying, I did have a conversation with Jay-Z. He told me, you know what side I'm on, but he never told me to stop doing what I'm doing. Then he turns around and says the same people defending Jay-Z were killing me for doing what he's doing. So you can tell Jermaine still has a lot of bitterness and anger by how he was treated, you know, six months ago when he was trying to work with the NFL and he wasn't even doing what allegedly Jay-Z is supposed to be doing. He was just trying to hold concerts in Atlanta. And so you can tell there's still a lot of animosity there. He was talking about people comparing him to R. Kelly and, you know, people just being wild, disrespectful to Jermaine. And even when that deal went down back then, I never spoke about it because it really didn't bother me. It's like, you know, whatever, you know, he's trying to do what he's trying to do. It is what it is, you know, so I never spoke on it because I wasn't offended by his deal. But um, you can tell there's still a lot of anger and animosity, but there's also a lot of double speak. okay. He made some good points when he was saying that, you know, black folks need to be on these boards. We need to be on the Grammy boards. When you don't see a lot of us winning Grammys, it's because there's not black people on these boards. We need to get on the boards for, you know, music and television and movies. And I get that. I agree. You know what I'm saying? We do have to sit at the table with certain people if we want to see change. But then he goes on to tell a story about when he was dating Janet Jackson. And he says that he was the president of the Grammy Association or something like that. And him being the president... He couldn't even do anything to salvage his girlfriend's, you know, relationship with the with the networks. He couldn't do anything to help Janet Jackson during Tittygate. So if you're the president, you're sitting on the board and you're not even able to help your girlfriend. Everything you just said, you know, what I'm saying five minutes before that is kind of irrelevant. So it was just like a lot of nervous energy, a lot of talking in circles, which is really weird because it's like, okay, so you're unable to help Janet. But then you're demanding that we all sit at the table to affect change. That doesn't make any sense when you're admitting that you sitting at the table, you weren't even able to help Janet. Could somebody please make it make sense? So I don't know. The whole thing is just really crazy. It was a lot of contradictions, a lot of nervous energy. You know, you could tell that somebody reached out to the both of them and was like, y'all better clean this shit up. Point blank period. Okay. So now that that video has gone viral with Jermaine Dupri and Brian Michael Cox, you know, pussy popping and backpedaling, bitch, um, Dame Dash had a lot to say. So Dame Dash decided to sit down with um, No Jumper host Adam22, and they were talking about, you know, Jay-Z's NFL deal. One thing about Dame Dash I will say is that he keeps it 100. He's been saying the same shit about Jay-Z for years, and he feels like this. Y'all didn't give a fuck when he was shitting on Rock Nation when, you know, he ran and got that deal behind my back and made all this money and left me off the cut. No care because it was just affecting Dame and now that we're able to see it live in action he's basically like you know I told you so so no I'm not shocked by this Jay-Z ain't shit that's just what he does so I'm gonna go ahead and play you guys a snippet of what Dame Dash had to say go ahead and check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary I mean everybody knows Jay ain't shit like that's everyone knows that <laughs> you know what I'm saying like but does not that a- surprise you at all because that seems particularly shady listen if you ask anyone in the industry it's a common knowledge that Jay ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? Define like, ain't shit for our audience. He, he's here. about the bag. You right. know, we all know that. It's about he's self preserving, period. Like, you know, it's just that the people he does it to don't have like Beyonce next to him. They don't have that kind of a power. But, you know, this dude here, everyone's looking. Mm. So I just think he kind of like, you know, like he used to do that shit. Like, it, it, he's like, it's not even like a, a, a secret. You know, he'd do that shit to me with girls. Like, you know, he'll be like, you know, I'll be talking to a chick and I'll be like, yo, you should ask me to do this, that, and the third. And he'd be like, I wouldn't do it. And then the next day he's wifed her. And I'd be like, oh, that's some funny shit. Right. You know, you know what you're dealing with when you deal with Jay. You know, Jermaine Dupree, I, I feel like, you know, I'm getting, for me to talk, it, 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 it's hard because I can't completely be objective, but it's the news of today. Mm-hmm. But I just think if you look under the hood, all the answers will reveal themselves. All right, so you guys just saw what Dame Dash had to say. So this entire situation is really interesting. And I want to make a point. I had posted a story the other day. This was like three days ago on Instagram. And I was talking about Sean King and Clay Kane. And basically, Clay Kane was... 
And basically, Clay Kane was talking about, you know, how he's upset that a rapper is being seen as the voice of, you know, black America and things like that. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this snippet and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. For me, it's less about Jay-Z, believe it or not, and it's more about Roger Goodell and the NFL, and I'll tell you why. Whenever black issues come about, they always go to a celebrity. Mm -hmm. When there was the controversy in 2012, 2013 over homophobia in the NFL, and we had to change the culture in the NFL, they didn't reach out to Neil Patrick Harris. They didn't reach out to Rosie O'Donnell. They reached out to GLAAD, and GLAAD came down there and they had a conversation and changed policy. We have to change the culture. Roger Goodell in the NFL didn't think to reach out to Color of Change, reach out to the NAACP. When there's an issue in the Jewish community, you don't call Barbara Streisand, right? You reach out to the ADL. So it's, it's that narrative that it, it really infantilizes black folks and says, oh, yeah, so we'll reach out to a celebrity. We'll have uh, Kanye and Steve Harvey come yeah. talk at, at, you know, Trump Tower as if they're the expert on blackness. They're comedians or, or entertainers. It really but, frustrates All right, so you guys just saw what Clay Kane had to say. And Clay made a lot of sense in that interview but like i was saying in the comments section you know a lot of people will say things but people don't know where they originate from so then people are giving clay all these props and i was like well come on now uh let me bring y'all back to the 60s okay because brother malcolm was saying the same thing that clay kane was saying we had a really good discussion in the comment section because a lot of younger people didn't they didn't know that malcolm x had a speech called the ballot of the bullet okay and in that speech he says this he says, so-called black leaders, comedians, comics, trumpet players, baseball players, show me in the white community where a comedian is the white leader. Show me in the white community where a singer is the white leader or a dancer or a trumpet player is the white leader. These aren't leaders. These are puppets and clowns that have been set up over the black community by the white community and have been made celebrities and usually they say exactly what they know the white man wants to hear. So a lot of people really like that. That's where that came from. That's where Clay's ideology came from. And I agree with that 100%. It's always funny to me when I go back and sometimes I'll go and watch those old videos of Malcolm X. And it's crazy that so many things that he said like almost 60 years ago still stand true to this day, okay? To this day! To this day! Y'all remember that damn meme. Um, we are still putting entertainers in front of the community as our spokespeople. And like I've said in previous videos, Jay-Z is not the voice for me. Neither is Kanye West or any of these celebrities. I am my own voice. I have my own platform. If people want to know my opinion, they can come and ask me. I don't need Jay-Z, Beyonce, or anybody else being propped up to be the voice of the black community. And I think that's the sad part because you have people who are not well-versed in politics. They're not well-versed in business. They're not well-versed in different, you know, sectors that they should be well-versed in. But then we prop them up and we ask them questions like, what do you think about this? And they're supposed to be our voice. I'm sorry, I don't want an ASAP Rocky speaking for me when it comes to Black Lives Matter. I don't want, you know, people asking Young Thug a serious question when he's not about that life. You Unfortunately, the same mentality still holds true today where we look to all these entertainers to do the right thing, to be the voice of black people, when at the end of the day, people are just people. And a lot of these folks, especially high up in the entertainment business, they're very scrupulous and they're about their bottom line. They're about their bag and whoever they have to step on to get it, that's what they're going to do. And, you know, real spit, let's go ahead and keep it real real a lot of this is fake outrage even though i don't agree what the moves that jay-z is making and what he did to colin and you know i feel like he basically you know spit in the face of everybody who was a part of this movement to basically secure his own bag even though I don't agree with this, I know a lot of it is fake outrage. I know in like, you know, three months, people will have moved on. And when Jay-Z drops a new track or Beyonce drops a new album, everything will be forgiven and water will be under a bridge. Kanye West made some of the most stupidest statements a year ago. But then when he dropped his new Yeezys, guess what? He sold out. When he dropped his new album, guess what? <clears throat> that bitch was fire. You know what I'm saying? Per everybody, you know, on the internet who was condemning him not even the month before that. So that's the thing. We have to stand for something and if you're not really going to stand behind you know this anger and this outrage two three months from now does it really matter at the end of the day i don't know y'all but let's go ahead and get the discussion popping i hope you guys enjoyed this podcast y'all enjoy y'all's weekend and make sure you like your comment and you subscribe to your girl so that way you can always be notified whenever i drop some hot piping tea okay so i'll talk to you guys later enjoy your weekend all right deuces